Alright guys, it is a gray, gloomy, depressing day here in the end times. Now Saturday, uh, August 21st. Take a wild guess where I am going. If your guess was the laundromat, you would be correct. I'm sure I will come up with a rant from the laundromat, uh, but I, I want to have the laundromat in the back, so I'm somehow going to hold my fucking tongue uh, before I bring you a depressed Airbnb host returns to the laundromat. And I, I just have to, uh, I, I was going to do this at midnight last night, I just didn't have the, uh, the energy for it. So I watched this thing, have, have, you, have you guys by any chance watched this, uh, I guess it's a documentary. I'm assuming it really is a documentary and not a mockumentary uh, called Misha and the Wolves. And I have not vetted this, you know, they, they put it, Netflix has it under their documentaries, you know, which is the same place they have American Vandal, for instance, which was a takeoff on documentaries. You know, American Vandal is 100% bullshit, complete fiction, so I honestly don't know if Misha in the Wolves is a real documentary or not, I'm assuming we're going to give the benefit of the doubt that it is. And so, I mean, it's, it's an hour and 20 minutes. It's worth your time to watch. Uh, if, if nothing else, assuming it is for real, that it, it is one of the best explanations I have, I have ever seen in a documentary explaining clueless fucking moron so I'm, I'm, I'm not going to get too much of the document you, you, you know uh, watch it yourself but one of the main premises in the documentary is that this little girl Misha or at least this woman claiming the, the claim she made is that when she was seven years old Okay, without getting into the particulars and the details, the, 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 the bottom line is this. This woman, uh, at age 70, claiming that when she was seven years old, that it's a little unclear to me that she lived at least for several months, plural, if not years, <coughs> somewhere between several months in a couple of years, she claimed when she was a seven-year-old child, she lived with a pack of wild wolves. And that these wolves took her in and it accepted her as a member of the pack. And, and, and all of this, uh, and that all of these books were written, uh, all of these books uh, back in the late, this happened in the late 90s, she was making this claim, uh, these bullshit claims, these obviously, on their face of it, unadulterated horseshit claims. And uh, several books were made, at least one movie was made. Uh, it ended up, this story ended up going to court, uh, you know, to a modern courthouse in the 1990s. Uh, with the judge and the jury and everything, listening to this unadulterated horseshit that this woman made all of the rounds, I mean all over the fucking planet, uh, from the U.S. to France, everywhere in between, making the rounds of these talk shows, you know, TV talk shows, radio talk shows, d just sitting here spewing out this on the face of it, unadulterated horseshit that a seven-year-old child uh, walked out in, 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 into the fucking wilds and was adopted by a pack of wolves. Uh, and, and she just moved in with the wolves for several months or however long, as I say, it was unclear. 
Uh, but but if it had been for a fucking for fucking ten minutes, it would have been fucking unadulterated horseshit. Why one person on this fucking planet would have believed for one fucking minute that a seven-year-old child walked off? into the woods, and, 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 and this was, I'm pretty sure, in the middle of winter, at least, the recreation of this seven-year-old child in the middle of winter without a, apparently, with no change of clothing, uh, without a tent, a seven-year-old girl disappeared into the fucking woods with the clothes on her back. Uh, she would not have made it one, no way she would have made it through the night. And, and of course, the fucking wolves would have found her. They would have fucking eaten her. But just, uh, uh, this is why I don't even know if this was a mockumentary or a real documentary. What do you think, Sancho Panza? Did you believe that, that unadulterated horse shit for one fucking minute? Uh, but but it, it's just unfucking believable that anybody believe this and and I would think that there was nobody on the fucking planet who would believe this if it wasn't for this fucking series of books I had a I had rants about this early in Humpty Dumpty try one of my first rants from the rock getting me all sorts of thumbs down was about that unadulterated on the face of it fucking bullshit unadulterated horseshit uh, who was it? Anastasia of the Ringing Cedars. Anastasia of the Ringing Cedars talking about how, I don't know, how old was Anastasia when she supposedly went out in the fucking woods by herself and, uh, and, and built some little cabin out in the fucking wilderness and, and it actually, you know, presented as fact that this girl, this uh, this this girl living by herself, uh, you know, befriended wolves and bears. It actually has a scene in, in there with this girl dancing with ba literally dancing with bears. And uh, when I pointed out in that rant from the Rock ten fucking years ago, you would not believe the fucking hate mail I got from these clueless fucking morons when I pointed out this is fucking bullshit. It's fucking bullshit. Not a fucking person on the planet is going to believe this fucking horse shit. Uh, unadulterated horse shit. Every fucking word of it. And uh, these people who still defend Anastasia of the Ringing Cedars uh, uh, just, just, just as this fact, uh, I don't know if one person uh, ever, uh, ever tried, one real journalist ever spent 10 fucking minutes vetting the, this lying sack of shit. I can't remember the name of the guy who wrote it, some Russian guy. Uh, but then, of course, you know, people love to point out, well, aren't you a big fan of Carlos Castaneda and Don Juan? And the and the quest uh, and the answer is yes, I'm a big fan, and I do realize that 95% of the writings of Carlos Castaneda unadulterated horseshit. Okay, for Carlos Castaneda, and he, and he actually got you know UCLA granted him his PhD uh, on, on the, this absolute fucking fabrication, but it doesn't fucking make any difference with, uh, with, with Castaneda. H who fucking cares? My, my point is, it, it, it doesn't make any difference. I mean, it was clearly fucking fiction. When I knew that, uh, that the works of Carlos Castaneda were fiction. It wasn't so much all of this, you know, absolutely, un you know, fantastic stuff. Uh, you know, you never knew when the guy was tripping or whatever. That, that you couldn't, you know, it, it was obviously bullshit on one level, but you couldn't just, you know, literally hit the bullshit detector button. I remember when I hit the bullshit detector button with Carlos Castaneda. If you guys remember the scene 
uh, when Don Juan instructed Carlos Castaneda to go out in the desert and catch a horny toad. So he went out, Carlos Castaneda, with a straight face. This has nothing to do with, with, with being high on drugs or anything. Reporting that, that he went out in the desert, captured a horny toad. Good luck. Have you ever just tried to catch one of th these things? And so he had a live horny toad, which is actually a, a species of lizard. It's not a frog. It is this very active, fast, squirmy lizard. And, and Carlos Castaneda was, was trying to get anybody with two fucking uh, molecules of a brain to believe that number one, he caught the thing. And then number two, Okay, just him, with no help from anybody else, that he, uh, that, that, what did he do? He broke a thorn off of a cactus and used it as the needle. Okay, so he makes a needle out of a cactus thorn and he made the thread out of some sort of fiber off of a plant that he made a needle and thread out of a cactus thorn and a plant fiber, caught a horny toad and sewed, holding the horny toad, I guess with his left hand, he sewed the eyelids shut using a cactus thorn and some sort of plant fiber. This man single-handedly sewed the eyelids shut of a, on a live horny toad. Okay, that is as far as I needed to read. I can't remember what book that showed up in. And at that point, I knew from that point forward that everything out of Carlos Castaneda's mouth was a fucking lie. But I don't know why this is such a, 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 a fierce, furious debate. Don Juan was not a real person. He was a fictional character. Carlos Castaneda uh, was sort of a performance artist. Don Juan Matus and Don Hanaro and all the rest of the gang, they were fictional characters, they were didactic devices that Carlos Castaneda used to talk about uh, what all that crazy shit he was talking about. Now, how the hell Carlos Castaneda ever came up with that stuff, but it's irrelevant uh, whether it was coming from Carlos Castaneda's brain or Don Juan Matus's. Uh, it doesn't affect the value of the story. And, uh, and, and, and that goddamn Misha, you know, when she was finally burned as an old lady, when she finally got outed, she was kind of trying to play the same card that it really didn't matter. That that was her reality. Uh, that she made this whole fantasy up uh, about the wolves because she couldn't stand living with humans, that she would rather live with a fucking pack of wolves than live in human society. And so she created, as a child, she made up this story that she had been, uh, and, and so she's claiming, what difference does it make? Uh, whether whether it was just my reality or physical reality, who knows? Maybe it doesn't make any damn difference. But uh, that's that's not the the point. Is is how anybody? I don't give a fuck uh, whether you're Misha in the Wolves, Anastasia of the Ringing Cedars, Carlos Castaneda and Don Juan Matus. How anybody can be you know, delivered th th this truck full of patently in your face, unadulterated fucking horseshit and just sit there, these gullible fuckers believing anything out of your mouth. It's like somebody uh, b believing that, that some fucking dude living in a falling down shack 
uh, hanging out at the goddamn laundromat used to be some sort of fucking successful real estate agent uh, living in this beautiful home, uh, you, you know, in Austin, Texas, that this, that this uh, dude claiming, uh, yeah, that he, that he was some sort of, high, you know, some sort of successful real estate agent living in a beautiful home, uh, owning five other houses, uh, you know, surrounded by hundreds of friends, having pussy coming out of his fucking ears, uh, you, know, you know, living, uh, th that, yeah, like, like some guy like that is, is gonna fucking eat some mushrooms or whatever, uh, that former successful real estate agent, uh, claims, uh, it is a didactic device. Uh, Sam Mitchell is Hambone Little Tail's didactic device. But anyway, people will believe anything. I, I, I mean, my God, the shit people will believe. Anyway, but one thing uh, I cannot believe is that I'm back at the fucking laundromat today after buying those fucking sheets yesterday. But that's another rant for 10 minutes from now. I gotta go put these fucking wet shit in uh, the dryer and I will have 18 minutes to come out here and rant. Bye guys.